Well, hello, everybody. Uh, New Year's uh, upon us and uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, that's, that's funny because that's what our lesson is about today, about worry, uh, how, uh, about uh, overcoming worry. What are some things that you worry about in your life? Uh, what's your biggest worry? Is it college? Is it high school? Get through high school? Is it college? What college are you going to go to? What are you going to take? Uh, is it a career? Are you going to uh, skip college and begin your career after high school? Uh, there's many things. COVID-19, you know, most of us are worried about COVID-19. Will we get it? Will our parents get it? Will will someone we love get it? Uh, will they get through it? Things of that nature. You watch TV and there's all kinds of things to worry about when you watch TV. And, and you know, the more I think about it, the more there is to worry about it and the more things to worry about. We just, things keep coming up to worry about. And the next thing you know, I mean, it's, you just... All these things you see on TV, the thing in Nashville, man, I mean, uh, all these things, the more I think about it, the more things we do have to worry about. Oh, man, I'm just, oh, man, what are, what are we going to do? Is 2020 going, is 2021 going to be worse than 2020? I mean, it's been, everybody knows 2020 was a terrible year, it seems like. And now we're starting 2021. Oh, man, the worries, the worries, the worries. What are we going to do? But wait a minute. That's what our lesson, our lesson is not to get us to worry more. Our lesson, let's look at the point of our lesson. God's presence provides a way out of worry. So if we trust God, we don't have to get caught up in all this worry, do we? No, we don't. We can put the worry behind us. We're going to be looking at a scripture this morning. That David wrote, Psalms 23, a very popular psalm. Uh, most people know it by heart. Most people have memorized it. Uh, it's probably the most well-known quoted psalm there is in God's word. And David wrote it. And David, he was a man after God's own heart. And he, if anybody knew how to trust God, I'm sure David did. And David had worries. We've studied David before. Uh, we've been in psalms and we've seen where... He had trials and troubles just like the rest of us, even more so than some of us. And he had reason to worry, but he knew how to put it behind him. And that's what we want to uh, gain out of this lesson here is God's presence provides a way out of worry. We don't let, have to be consumed by the worries of the world, by the cares of the uh, trials that are going on in our lives, by the decisions we have to make. We can trust God to get us through it and to help us make the right decisions. So let's go ahead and get in Psalms 23. We're going to begin with uh, 1 through 6. And I'll go ahead and read that for us. Let's see here. Uh, it's very familiar to most of you. This is not the King James Version, which is I, I'm most familiar with, but it's still the same Psalms 23. 1 through 3 is what we're going to start with. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right path for his name's sake. That sounds comforting right there. Just, just reading that is very comforting. He begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, David was a shepherd before he was a king. Uh, David was from humble background. You know, shepherds were some of the lowliest people in life in that day and time. And, uh, but he rose to be a king, but, but he remembered his shepherd days and he remembered what being a shepherd was like. The shepherd protected the sheep. And when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, David knew what he was talking about. He knew that he had a job of protecting the sheep and he was their protector and their overseer. And he seen God as the same way of, uh, over him, that God protected him and, uh, and, and comforted him the way he protected and comforted his sheep. So he's seen that as a as a, a, a way to, to just uh, forget, not necessarily forget about his worries, but not to let his worries consume him because he knew God was in control and that he didn't have to know the answers to everything as long as he knew God had the answers to everything and he trusted God with his life like the sheep trusted the shepherd. And the the, uh, he, he makes three points here about God guides us. First point is God guides us. You notice there in the scripture that it says, he lets, he leads, and he leads. Three different times he says, either he lets or he leads. 
Uh, so God guides us through life. If we will follow him, if we will be obedient to God, God is going to get us through this life uh, in one piece. You might say, I wouldn't say on scratch because we're going to have, we make our mistakes. Usually that's when we're out of God's will, though, and we're not, we're not paying attention to God as the sheep wander away from the shepherd because the sheep are not paying attention to what they're doing or where they're at, and they wander away. And then the shepherd has to guide them back in and nudge them back this way and nudge them back that way. So God guides us. He leads us. He, he's, he's keeping us out of the troubles when we uh, uh, are veering off into those troubles. God tries to steer us away from those. Sometimes we're stubborn like sheep can be and, and keep going in the wrong direction and get in a bad way. And, and, uh, and sometimes we, we get to the point where uh, we get out, totally out of God's will. But when we're allowing God to nudge us and direct us, he's going to keep us in his path. He's going to guide us and keep us safe and keep us comfort uh, in a comfort zone. You know, sometimes we do need to get out of a comfort zone when we're serving God. But what I mean by a comfort zone, he's going he to keep us where we feel God's presence and know that he's around. And so God guides us. He, he guides and directs our paths. And God provides for us. You know, it, it goes on to say... Uh, he gives us, he helps us lie down in green pastures. What does green pastures mean to, to you or, or what visions come to your mind? I, I, I see a great big old green field that's just lush green. Uh, and, and for a sheep, that's food. That's comfort, knowing that there's plenty to eat. You know, God's going to uh, comfort us. He's going to give us those green pastures to lie down in. To, and when we think about lying down in, we can lay down and know no, there's no harm around. There's no enemies around. Uh, we're protected and, and we're safe. And that's the way God wants us to feel in his presence. And with him, when we trust him, he wants us to know that he's got our back and that he's going to protect us. He's going to keep us safe. He's going to get us through these situations that come up. He's going to give us those green pastures. It says he lies us beside the still waters. One of the sheep's biggest fears was the rushing, running water. They wouldn't even get close to it because they're scared of it. Because if a sheep fell in with all that uh, fleece on them, they would quickly become too heavy to uh, float, and they would sink and drown. So they didn't like rushing water. They liked still water, a very slow spring, something shallow, something they could step in and drink out of and not fear. You know, and God's going to provide us with that. He leads us beside the still waters, gives us that peace that helps us to get through those situations around us. Um, you've heard people say having peace in the midst of a storm, that God gave us peace in the midst of a storm. And he will do that. He will give us those still waters, even in the midst of the uh, mighty raging storms that rage about us. You remember uh, the story where Jesus was on the boat with Peter and uh, other disciples, and a storm raged, and Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat. And the storm was raging, and water was coming into the boat. And they woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, are you not care that we're going to die and jesus what did he do he stilled the waters he made it quiet he comforted his disciples and let them know that he was in charge and that's what we need to realize when when the waters are stormy around us that god's going to lead us to the still waters he's going to quiet the storm and give us the peace uh that that uh get passes all understanding he's going to provide for our needs in the midst of those storms He's going to take care of us. He leads us along the right paths. You know, he's, he, uh, he's making sure that we, when we follow his direction, when we are, are listening to him, he's going to take us down the right paths. He's going to help us make good choices, uh, uh, good life choices, good decisions in life to, to, to take us to that right career, even to that right college. You know, if you're still in high school and you're worried about where you're going to college, Take it to God. Let God direct your uh, thoughts and your mind on where to go to college. Uh, don't go to college because you heard it's a good party school. Don't go to college because you, uh, you, uh, it's uh, the cheapest thing in the world, or the most expensive, or the most prestigious, or the uh, most edu uh, has the highest quality education. Go where God is directing you. Pray about it and let God direct you to the right uh, path, whether it's college or whether it's career that you need to start, or whatever it is, first get through high school. That's what we need to worry about today. If you're going to worry, 
get through high school. Don't don't borrow any words from tomorrow. But as you do make those choices, let God lead you. And then it says God renews us. Uh, the third decision they made there. He says uh, he leads us along the right path. He renews our life there. It says in that, and I like to say renews or restores. You know, sometimes we feel down and out and just there's like there's no use and there's no hope. You know, we get discouraged. We may get rejection letters. We may get uh, letters coming when we try and apply for college or scholarships. We may we may get uh, disappointments there, and we may feel like we'll never be able to go to college. We'll never be able to do this. We'll never get our career off the ground. We'll never get through high school. But God will renew you. Take it to God, and God will renew and restore that hope that you once had for for whatever it is you're seeking. Uh, make sure it's part of God's plan. And if it is, God's going to provide the tools for you to get there. He can provide the means and the ways. But God's going to renew us and give us new hope and help us encourage us so that we can get started back on the path that God has chosen for us. And that's the main, excuse me, that's the main thing we need to know here is that we don't have to worry about these things. Concern, yes. Worry, no. Don't let it consume your life where all you thinking about is doing this or getting that or or how can I do this or what's going to happen next or or what's going on and what's down the road. We need to trust God for what's down the road, even in the midst of the storms that we're going through in life. Now let's go on to uh, excuse me, the next part of uh, verses 4 and 5 in Psalms 23. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. <clears throat> Excuse me. God, uh, he got four points. We got four points in this, in this part of Psalms. First point is God protects. Even when I go through the darkest valley, or as King James, I love the way King James said, even though when I go through the valley of the death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I love the way that we don't have to fear, even when we're in our darkest moments, even when we're in our worst trials in life, we don't have to fear because we know God is with us. The worst that can happen, if you're a child of God, the very worst thing that can happen is your physical life is gone. What happens next? We're with Christ. Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. So even if God life is taken, we're with God. So that's the worst that can happen. But so we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear what's coming because we know that God's got us. That God is, as Ron likes to say, God's got this. And he does. God's going to protect us and take us through the trials and troubles and the worries that we may have. So we don't have to uh, worry about that. He we don't have to fear the danger that's out there. Uh, God is going to protect us. God's pre presence gives us comfort. He says, you are with me. <laughs> For you are with me. I have this cartoon, excuse me, on my, on my uh, file cabinet at work. It's about, it shows uh, Satan confronting this sheep, or a wolf. It shows a wolf confronting the sheep. And Jesus standing by the sheep with his arm around him, and the the sheep says, "I'm with him," you know, and, and telling the wolf, "I'm with him." In other words, the wolf can't touch me because I'm with Christ, and that's the way we need to see it. it. Says right here, "I fear no danger, for you are with me." God is with us, so why do we have to fear? We know that God has blessed our lives. He's 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 comforting us. He's he's protecting us. So what do we have to fear? Really nothing. Yet we do, don't we? Yes, we do. I'm, the, I'm just as bad as the rest of you. We do let fear creep into our lives and we get discouraged and we worry. But we don't have to because right here in God's word, and David knew this, for you are with me, God. And he goes on to say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He knows that rod and staff. David knew what the rod and staff was for. David knew it wasn't just something to lean upon, <laughs> as we do when we've got the rod and staff. 
We just leaned upon it because we didn't know the use for it. But David knew it was to ward off the enemies, to fight off the sheep, the bears, whatever's trying to protect, uh, uh, attack the sheep. And he also had a crook on it, on the very end of it. You know, the staff comes up like this with a crook. And the crook was for if the sheep fell into a hole, fell into off, off, on a, off a hill, or fell into the water. He could take that crook and, and wrap it around the sheep and pull the sheep back to safety. So the rod was there for, two, for, 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 for protection and for our safety. And so God is there to protect us and to keep us safe. And, and we know that God is going, we can be in his, when we're in his presence, we, we can relax and we can enjoy life and we can enjoy what God has in store for us. I say when we're in his presence, when are we not in his presence? Even when we're doing wrong, we're in the midst of God's world and his creation and we're in his presence. But when we're in his presence, we don't have to fear. We can give it to God. God's with us, what he says there, for he is with me. And because of that, we can have courage. God's presence gives us, that's third point, God's presence gives us courage. God, when we know that God's got our back, as that sheep told the wolf, I ain't worried about you. He's with me. And that's what we can tell Satan when he attacks us. When he's digging at us and, and causing us to uh, lose sight of God and get into worry, we need to, we need to, Take a deep breath, hold back, and realize God's with me. God's protecting me. I ain't got to worry about you. I ain't got to take this to worry. I ain't got to keep this on my mind all day. I ain't got to let this run my day. I ain't got to let this run my week. I ain't got to let this run my, run my moment. God's with me. I can pray about this and leave it with God. And then I can move on to other things. And, uh, and then the fourth point is we share in God's victory. What does he say there? Uh, it just says he, in the presence, I can uh, anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. My cup overflows. Uh, we share in God's victory. God gives us more than we ever deserved. God our cup runs over. When God blesses us, your cup's going to run over. Try him. Give him your all and see if he gives you more than his all. He's going to bless you. Your cup's going to run over, overflowing with uh, whatever it is God's blessing you with. It could be finances. It could be friendship. It could be knowledge. It could be wisdom. It could be uh, uh, health. It could be uh, peace in the midst of uh, storms. Uh, God's going to overflow. Your cup's going to overflow. David knew this. And as I said, David, excuse me, David had been through many storms and and going through storms uh, in his life. He, you know, he had to uh, run from Saul. He had to uh, uh, hide from Saul for a long time. He had to run from his own son who tried to overtake him. Uh, he had enemies within his own family that was trying to destroy him. He, he, he had all kinds of things going on in his life, turmoil within his family. But yet he knew when, when he needed that peace, he takes it to God. He took it to God and God gave him the peace even in the midst of the storms. And that's what God's going to do for you. And that's what God will do for me when we take it to God, when we trust God, when we, when we, uh, allow God to be our shepherd and not try to do it on our own. That's that's where we always make the mistakes. And especially young people as you begin in life and, and you get to the point where you may be out of your uh, house uh, going to college next year or the, a few years after, uh, as some of you had already got in college right now. Uh, you, you go and you think that you've got it made. You want to do it your way. Uh, you don't want to listen to what your parents told you. You, you, you want to... Uh, go the way of all the kids around you now and, and what they're telling you is right and wrong and what the world's telling you is right and wrong. But you need to learn to go back to your roots and trust Christ. Trust God because he's the one that created us. He knows what's best for us and he's the one that's going to get you through this life uh, it, with peace and, 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 and satisfaction and contentment uh, when you trust him. You can go your own way. 
<laughs> you're going to pay for it. You're going to you're going to pay the price for going your own way. I did. I have. And uh, everyone I know at my age has been through trials and troubles that we caused ourselves because we went our own way. Uh, but if you get to that point, if you choose to go your own way, remember God is waiting for you. Come back to him as quickly as possible. As soon as you realize the mistakes of your trials and troubles, and hopefully you'll realize them sooner than later. Uh, but the best thing is not to go your own way and to trust God and allow him to take you his way and your life is going to be far better and far greater. Let's go ahead and finish in Psalms 23 in the last verse here. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. You know, only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. God is saying, He's going to be with us all the days of our life. And I love the way the King James says this. Uh, it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In this version, it says, as long as I live, I like the way it says in King James, for, God, I'll be in the house of the Lord forever, forever and ever. Not just as long as I live in this body, but forever throughout eternity. We're going to, you know, we, we just finished the Christmas season. We just went through the Christmas season. You know, and, and Jesus, uh, when, uh, when the, the angel told Mary and Joseph to name Jesus, he, that he would be Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God is with us. And that is so appropriate in this verse, if in this uh, Psalms 23, is, is basically that's what we need to remember. God is with us. And if we can remember that, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing in life, we will know that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because God is with us and God's going to get us through this. God's going to prepare us and he's going to take us through this life and he's going to take us on beyond this life. That's what he came to this world to live and went on the cross and died for you and me so that we may have this hope, so that we may can read this psalm and believe it and know that it's faithful and know that it's true that God has prepared a place for us and that we'll go be with him and that we can trust him to get us through this life and that we don't have to worry about the cares of this world and about the things going on in this world. We just leave it with God. And if we'll learn to do that, you're going to have a great life, young people. You're going to have a great life. Let's close with prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you. And we praise you. And we worship you. And we pray that you'll let us leave our cares with you, Lord. To just take Christ's name I pray. Amen. Bye. I love y'all.